Let's recognize the question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the uh, witnesses for your length um, <clears throat> of sitting in this room today. I think we're on, we're over five and a half hours now, um, and I know at least two of you have been here the whole time, so thank you, or at least largely the whole time, so thank you. Um, so I've been concerned at some of the comments that I've heard today about what Republicans are trying to do with this piece of legislation, and I've heard things like, you know, can we have a debate? We'd love to have that debate, um, but the debate can't start with accusations that all we want to do in this bill is hurt children and veterans and people with disabilities and seniors and probably any, any number of other things that the Democrats could think of to throw accusations at us. Um, we've also heard, I heard someone on the other side of the aisle say that, that Republicans have put us in this position. I beg to differ. Uh, I think that we got into this mess in the first place uh, with out-of-control spending. Um, Republicans and Democrats, I think, over the years have been responsible for that. But over the last two years, uh, under the Biden administration, it has been on steroids. When he took office in January 21, since then, he and House Democrats have increased the 10-year spending trajectory by $10 trillion. That includes ramming through $2 trillion in the American Rescue Plan, which had $400 billion for policies that discouraged people from working, uh, further hurting the economy. Uh, the American Rescue Plan um, also, uh, after that, they moved on to the Inflation Reduction Act, um, and on and on and on, including Biden's executive actions that have totaled over $1.5 trillion. I would ask just my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, um, Ranking Member DeLauro, sh should one person be able to spend $1.5 trillion of taxpayer money? Mr. Norman, who's no longer here, talked about a filibuster. I've been sitting here listening to a filibuster for the last maybe uh, hour. I'm, That's not the question. You asked me a question which I'm prepared to answer. Um, uh, in terms of the debt, 25 percent of the current debt was accumulated the question, under the Ms. prior DeLora administration. Is, is should one person be able to spend 1.5 trillion dollars of taxpayer money? Well, one person by executive is not, order. I mean, I, I don't know what you mean by one person doing so, that. So, Joe the Biden, Congress, the Congress voted. For these issues, Did some the Congress, were bipartisan. Sorry, I'm going to reclaim my time. Well, but you don't want to hear an answer. Bipartisan. I, you're not giving an answer. Yes. Let me ask you the question. Here's the question. What's the question? One person. Joe Biden signed an executive order on the student loan giveaway. That was 465 billion dollars. That was not passed by law. He did that by executive order. Okay. He is one man. I'm asking you a question. You can answer yes well, or no. The, the executive Should one person be able to spend $465 billion of taxpayer money? Listen, that the executive, yes all or executives, no. all executives have the power for executive orders. So your answer orders. Is, is yes. All part, uh, okay. And, uh, you know, we could go back and take a look at what other. Reclaiming uh, my time. You can Thank reclaim you. it all you want. The, I just asked the question. That's a lot of what money is, for one person to spend. Yes. Well, you so, spent a lot of money on the Iraq war and Joe about a tax Bu break excuse as me, one person. It's my time. Go ahead. <laughs> so the Democrats got us into this mess in the first place oh, with the out-of-control spending. President Biden has increased this debt by approximately $2 trillion. Republicans have a plan. It is limit spending, save taxpayer dollars, and grow the economy. The Democrat plan is raise taxes, raise taxes, raise taxes, and spend, spend, spend. That is not sustainable. Mr. Chairman, Chairman Smith, what happens when we spend more money than we have? What happens to the economy? Uh, it, it, it tanks. Um, in fact, if you look back, you've heard, um, you've heard a lot of folks on the other side of the aisle that talked about um, back in September, back in 2011, um, when there was a downgrade in our credit, it wasn't because we defaulted. It's because Congress wasn't serious about our debt crisis. That is why we were downgraded. 
And this is the problem, is if, if Republicans and Democrats cannot talk about increasing the debt limit and putting some kind of fiscal restraints in, we are headed in that same direction again. And all that we're doing, Representative, is trying to get the president to negotiate with us. He is in a reckless position right now, refusing to negotiate with House Republicans and demanding only one thing that he can't even get passed on the Senate side. That is what's detrimental to our economy. That is extremism. Those are policies that will hurt working class families, small businesses, and farmers. And hopefully, hopefully he'll decide to negotiate. And hopefully the president does not want to default on our debt. But his actions shows that that is what he wants to do right now is to default. And that's unacceptable. Chairman Smith, if, if you were to go to, to get a bank loan and your debt to income ratio were upside down, would you be able to get a loan? Absolutely not. And our debt to income ratio is not great for the United States right now. Is that right? There's a reason why the Chinese are trying to change the world currency of the dollar. So all of this spending, and, and it feels as if we're trying to be all things to all people, money grows on trees, there's no consequence for that, but there are consequences for that. And the cost to the American people of, of overspending mm -hmm. is the inflation that we're under currently, which is making everything cost more. Uh, I visited a couple of food pantries in my district recently. They're having trouble keeping up because of the cost of food. And that is, the act that is because of the actions of irresponsible government spending. So all we're asking for is something in return. It's as if uh, the government, uh, under the Democrats' leadership, they're acting irresponsibly like a child that runs up the credit card debt, and the, we have to come in as the responsible parents and say, look, we're going to pay the bill, but we're going to ask some things in return. We're going to ask some things in return. Because nobody, no household in America, can just keep spending the way the federal government is spending. So we have a solution. We've put forth a reasonable plan. I have not seen a plan uh, come from the Democrat side of the aisle. I, I haven't heard anything about what they would cut in terms of spending. I know we've heard about Joe Biden's uh, plan to decrease the deficit by $3 trillion. Um, are there any spending cuts in that plan, Chairman Smith? In, in, in Joe Biden's plan? To reduce? To reduce the deficit by $3 trillion. I, 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 I'm not the budget leader, but I, I would let the chairman of the budget committee talk about it. But I, I, I don't see where his math adds up. I, I, I just don't see where he says that he's cutting the deficit by $3 trillion and how that actually adds up. Chairman but Arrington? Chairman Mike. $65 trillion in new, in new taxes, $65 trillion over 10 years, $65 trillion. It's the largest tax hike over the 10-year budget window in the history of the country. It's the 20% deduction for small businesses. It's marginal rates. It's the death tax that will be doubled on farmers and ranchers. I could go through the list, but... Um, the spending goes up over 10 years on mandatory by $2.7 trillion. And as I mentioned, after a 13% increase last year in the appropriations on the discretionary side, the president's asking for a 6% increase or $100 billion. So he's going, he's asking in the middle of this record 17-month, 40-year high sustained inflation, an economy that's rapidly sliding into recession, the prospect of a debt crisis, whether it's a slow burn or it's a cliff, sort of grease-like uh, uh, impact. And this president of ours is asking, this is, I think, very audacious, yeah. but he's, he's, he's proposing that we increase mandatory, I mean, uh, Discretionary spending next year, $100 billion. He's going $100 billion one way, and we're trying to take the country to reduce responsibly 
spending and right-size the bureaucracy coming out of COVID by $130 billion. That's about as stark of a distinction between the mentality, the, the, the worldview, certainly the, the view of our government's responsibility to it, uh, our citizens. What happens to our veterans if we uh, spend more on in, uh, interest on the debt than we do on military spending? Listen, if there's a sovereign debt crisis, we jeopardize the, the dollar as the global reserve currency. We cannot borrow. We have, as I mentioned, $3 trillion in annual deficits uh, in 10 years. You, austerity, like we've never seen, painful, deep, to the bone cuts. You can't really raise taxes in that situation because the economy is in the tank. You can try, but you won't get much. And so it's a very um, desperate situation. I can tell you that the veterans that I interact with on a regular basis, they champion this cause of restoring fiscal sanity in this country of ours. And, and, and because if, if just to round off this, this, uh, this comment about veterans, they didn't fight and risk their lives for a country where politicians, spendthrift politicians, would bankrupt it and for their children. That's not what they, that's, that's not the leadership and the sacrifice that they demonstrated on the battlefield and they expect that we return suit as leaders of the greatest country in the world, Does that we come alongside them and do our part to muster the courage to do the right thing. And uh, that's what it's going to take, especially when you have all these false choices of, children and elderly and, you know, and, and veterans. And it's just, that is the resounding noise of people who do not want to do the tough job. That's the resounding noise of, of, of people who, in my opinion, are shrinking back from a moment, a moment, a window of mercy before the card, the house of cards comes crumbling down. Well, and, 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 and Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would like unanimous consent to enter to the record a report from the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget uh, entitled Putting the Limit, Save, Grow, Act in Context. Without objection. I'm just wrapping up. Um, okay. Chairman Smith, I'm, I'm taking this plane in for a landing. So we hear a lot about trillion, billion, million, so when we say words like $1 trillion, uh, I want it to mean something to the American people when we hear those words, because we throw those around, and I want to make sure that that has meaning back home when we talk about how much money we're actually talking about. And you've told me, um, you've given me an example of, of what that is in real life terms. Could you share that with us, please? So we, um, I, you know, the $10 trillion that was an increase in spending that you highlighted earlier. To put that into perspective of what folks back home, when you hear trillions and billions, if you spent $13 million every day since Jesus Christ was born, you still would not have spent $10 trillion. And that is just the increase in spending that the one-party Democrat rule did over the last two years with Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer leading the ship. And people wonder why inflation has gone up 14.9% in those two years when inflation was 1.4% before all that spending started. And that's what put us in this position. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, General Lady. The gentleman from New York is recognized for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Smith, uh, in a statement regarding how